him, he's facing a very big lawsuit uh, from me. So he'll be getting served very, very soon because this information cannot be proven in the court of law as positively accurate. It's actually inaccurate, which gives me very good information. And, uh, and also I get a chance to now uh, sue his homeowner's insurance policy. And mm -hmm. I'm going to start doing that to everybody that wants to play this kind of game. I, had, I got four Instagram accounts completely deleted, completely deactivated. Hey, Pocket Watchers. Do you want to know what it's like to have an expert in space aliens threaten to sue you? Let's go. This is Pocket Watching with JT. All right, guys. So I recently did a video covering Mr. Billy Carson. And apparently Billy isn't too happy with the Pocket Watcher. Wasn't a fan of the video. And I know this because his legal team just sent me a cease and desist letter. And in the letter, they basically say that they want me no, they're demanding that I remove my video from the internet and that the points that I made in that video, I know are false. So I do not want to be guilty of spreading lies on the internet. So let's go over each point that I made in the previous video and let's see if they're false. And then you take my face and put it on some shit that's in a bad light. I'm out here making money, man. Your top priority when something happens in business that doesn't go right is to go and replace that income. That's your top priority. Point number one, Billy Carson sells online cryptocurrency training courses. Well, you can tell right here with this website, Billy Carson does sell online cryptocurrency training courses. So. I'm guessing that's not one of the points that Billy is upset with me about. Point number two, his education. Now, in the letter, I can tell that Billy wasn't too happy with the way I characterized his education. As I said in the video, I can tell after listening to him just for a few minutes that he was not a Harvard graduate. And... As you can see, based off his LinkedIn profile, he does claim that he was educated at Harvard and MIT. But if you look closer, you'll see what type of education he had. Certificates from both of them. As you can see, from Harvard, you can get a certificate in ancient civilizations in six weeks. And it is 100% free. And here you can see that you too can get a certificate from MIT in neuroscience in six weeks. Not very impressive. Point number three, the name change. Now, I've had many, many, many Billy Carson fans come on my video in the comments and say, pocket watcher, you don't know what you're talking about. Billy Carson, never changed his name. He was a victim of identity theft. Okay, well, let's take a look at this. These things are public record. So right here, you will see from Broward County, Florida, the actual case file of Billy Carlson, K-A-R-L-S-O-N, William Tyrone Carlson, changing his name to Billy Carson is right here. It's on the Broward County website. If it's wrong, then Billy, you have a beef with Broward County, not pocket watching with JT. And last point number four. And point number four to me is the biggest point based on the letter I received from Billy Carson's legal team. Based on this cease and desist letter, Billy is not very happy that I said that he was apparently a grifter. And listen, Billy, I didn't do it to hurt your feelings. I only said it based on the definition of the word. So let's take a look at the definition of the word grifter. Grifter, a person who engages in petty or small scale swindling. Now at this point, you have to ask the question, JT, 
why would you say that this man is apparently a grifter? Good question. Let's take a look at the Broward County court system. According to the Broward County Sheriff's Office, William Tyrone Carlson, also known as Billy Carson, was arrested for fraud charges. It says on December 18th, 2013, the defendant, William Carlson, was arrested for using a fictitious ID card in the name of Charles Rubin to fraudulently open a Chase checking account at Chase Bank. The officer states, I read defendant Miranda warning via card, which he waived and admitted that the license was fictitious. Defendant advised that he purchased the license off the street in Miami. Defendant advised that he went on a website, netspin.com, where he was able to acquire the credit card. Defendant advised that his credit is bad and could not open an account under his real name. Further investigation revealed, in 2013, the defendant opened at least six credit accounts using Tony Bellamy's real social security number without his authorization. In a sworn statement, Tony Bellamy advised that he does not know William Carlson and did not give him permission to open the credit accounts using his social security number. Tony Bellamy desires prosecution. For those of you who are asking, well, JT, what happened in the case? Apparently, William Carlson took a plea deal. So, Billy, you have to understand, based on the records at Broward County, it's understandable that I would say that apparently you're a grifter. All right, guys, what is the lesson of the day? Today's lesson is never poke the pocket watcher bear. I'm not here to spread lies on anyone. I'm only here to help you understand how investing really works and how to properly vet a person or a company before you give them your hard-earned money. Now, if you want more financial tips from a certified financial planner, subscribe to Pocket Watching with JT. Need more? Book your personal consultation with my man JT at pocketwatcher.net.